Добрый день, уважаемые коллеги и гости наших. Что пандемия коронавируса is called digital time and the COVID-19 pandemic has triggered a transition to digital world and that transition has happened really quickly. We cannot change this reality but we can learn to navigate through it. We can help those for whom this digitization has become almost an insurmountable obstacle. The digital world has hardly been described by anybody. Does that mean that there are no ethical um, norms and standards there? I mean, those norms and standards which were developed by the mankind over the thousand thousand years. The, the mankind is not going to drop digital technologies. They will become ubiquitous. However, in order to harmonize this new reality, we need new rules. We need to outline the borders for what can and cannot be done. And so let's think about how we can come up with new rules which are applicable to the digital world. Digital generation and the generation of our kids is currently in danger. Let's imagine that Internet shuts down tomorrow and our kids will, will be lost. I mean, Нильс Бор в свое время сказал, Bohr, очень актуальна на данный момент фраза, что делать phrase, phrase, today, today we'll be talking about present times and we'll touch upon the future. Who is going to make decisions in the future? Would that be AI? Would that be robots? Or would that be human beings? And what kind of morale should guide this decision-making process? И сегодняшнюю беседу... So let me introduce our speakers today. Вы доктор философских наук, института социогумы. Игорь Чубаров, доктор философии и насколько трансформировались этические... Директор института социально-хуманитарной науки, которые появились в физическом мире. So do you think that the rules and laws of the digital world are very much different from the rules and norms of the conventional world? I think we can say today that new norms are emerging, they get institutionalized, they become an integral part of our life. And this process happens in a very quick, in, in a very swift way. It's a dramatic change. So it's, it's new industrial revolution unfolding in front of us. Digital revolution, as it is frequently referred to. And Foucault used to write, uh, to write about it quite a lot. And when it comes to ethics, we frequently find out that there are different levels of ethics. There are different ethical codes that we adhere to. There is no standard, standalone. There is no standard code, ethical code, for all of us. So our society takes into account ethical norms and standards when we have to make it, when we have to make decisions. новых отношений между людьми, социальных отношений. Он характеризуется тем, что появились новые акторы, новые. Now we have new, let's say, actors involved in this process. Уже статус таких вот. And these new entities, these new entities, they. And I'm referring to robots and AI-powered machines. They claim new, new rights in our system. And we also have entities like plants and animals. And all these components, all, all these actors become components of the ethical world. 
самоэтика, кроме вот такого своего гетерогенного сборного характера. So ethics is heterogeneous. Она не просто выступает в роли таких запретительных is not just a code or a list of things which you should not do. And it's not a list of laws which stipulate responsibility for violating particular norms. It's not confined to that. Ethics can become part of new products. Ethics can become an integral part of new kind of relations. And it indeed becomes part of the new world. And we need to help people to adapt to this new digital world. And on, on the other hand, we need to help technology to find a proper, proper place in the world. We don't want to be too we don't want to be too suspicious about new technology. And ethics should assume a more creative form and nature. IT specialists, uh, specialists in education area, they discuss these things a lot now. Okay. You have touched upon education, and I represent the area of education, and talking about ethics, norms and standards, Mr. Spiridonov, I'd like to ask you a question. You're a venture investor and you're a co-founder of uh, one of the largest platforms, educational platforms in our country, and in one of your talks, you gave a pretty sincere answer about what you think about the online education. It's like digital, digitized offline experience, including all the mass, which is normal for schools. But educational institutions like school, college, university, these institutions not only do they teach you science, they, e they also teach you ethical norms. So, and you, you acquire these norms over the course of interacting with your classmates. Do you think it is possible to digitize that part of educational experience? Mm -hmm. And that should ultimately help new generation to adapt better to the new world. It's a very comprehensive question, and it, it mandates a very long answer, but I'll try to be brief. I'll try to be brief talking about what it means for education to transfer, to go from the real world into the digital, digital world. I'm one of the pioneers of digital education, but I'm the person to uh, agree that it is far from being perfect. Here we are living in the 21st century, and we have teachers from the 20th century which are using the teaching methods from the 19th century. And this is the problem that we face, no matter what you talk about, whether you talk about online or offline education. What is online education 2.0? What is the new teaching methodology? What kind of ways should we ad adopt to educate our kids at the required pace. There is one important thing here. There is a risk of... Uh, there is a risk for this discussion to become too far-fetched, and we need to stay pragmatic. And you mentioned this digital lockdown or internet shutdown in the opening statement, and there is a joke which I like pretty much. So in, in case... In case of the internet shutdown, you would have people, wander, lost people wandering around cities, showing pictures to each other and asking questions, do you like this? Because this is what we normally do in the internet. Uh, we are dramatically changing our informational landscape. 
все больше с этим становятся люди. Да, вот я не понял, будет ли сегодня Амиран. Да, uh, I'm not sure whether we have uh, Amiran as one of the speakers today, and Amiran is a great, a great example of a self-made person. He's a video blogger, and now he's got an audience which, in terms of its size, is comparable to an audience of a, of a media. Clip-type clip thinking is a feature of today's society. And all these things put together finally result in the fact that people become lost. How do they navigate their way in this information world? Because before, we were in a situation where we never had enough information. Now we have so much. We cannot digest it properly. Well, since you mentioned bloggers, do you think think that we should regulate their activity. No. I believe that I believe that we need to carry on doing what we are doing, and we should adapt, adopt a business-like approach here, like step-by-step -step iteration. Because you cannot regulate this area. Because normally people try to do this through creating regulatory framework, and this regulatory framework is created in the context of political complications and people who write these laws they have vested interests but these bloggers they are it's a moral beacons or cultural beacons for their audience and they, they, they are like journalists actually well, we live during the time when attention matters and tension can be converted into capital into money and, and yes, these video bloggers, in case they have a large audience, uh, they, they, they can become really powerful. But this process will continue anyway. But we were talking about education. And education is undergoing through a massive change now. And the right way to look at it would be to try and understand the role that you personally can play in this. So, if you're part of the educational area, try to, try to experiment and adopt a business-like approach, iterate, have a hypothesis, validate this hypothesis, iterate your model, and carry on. But getting back to moral and ethical standards, do you think they can be digitized? Ethical norms and standards, they are still there. They are still there. It's, they are instilled in us. I mean, these Ten Commandments, those Ten Commandments that we have, they are within. But I don't think that we need to heavily regulate this area. We need to watch what's happening. And if we have bloggers which are, well, if we have bloggers who, uh, like, say, speak in favor of pedophilia or Nazi culture, then you should address that, of course. But heavy regulation here is not required. There has to be some predictability. And so you need to be on top of things, but you have to have very light touch control here. I would also like to add one comment here. In many discussions, we, we see men prevailing over women. Uh, I, today, uh, it, it will be interesting to talk to a blogger, and it will be interesting to have somebody to have AI represented at this table here. I'm talking about the meta-ethical positions. The point that was made here, we probably don't need the ethical rules because we already have clear-cut rules or commandments and we need to observe compliance with these rules. We have new actors within our system, and AI. And AI is becoming more and more deeply involved in in our life, and it's, it, it is becoming a trendsetter. My point is that 
э, прочитали об этике. А когда появляются нового типа вообще этические нормы, которые... representatives of the new stratters in our society. So this ethics is still there, even if it is not, even if it is not spelled out. So you, you are saying that we still have social, well-established social institutions and, decision -make, and they run the decision-making process. I believe now we are in a situation when our social institutions, they are lagging behind technology in terms of its maturity. We, we, do not, we do not have the luxury of referring to Ten Commandments, like, you shall not kill. If we keep mentioning this, we will con we'll be confining ourselves to their war-type thinking. Ethical rules, and that's my point, ethical rules have migrated into the online world. In some cases, in some cases, these rules become very hypocritical, like YouTube or Instagram. Or they may be even, even far too strict. So uh, my point is that it's a very vibrant environment, and it needs to be studied, it needs to be explored. But we need to adapt, uh, adopt a pragmatic approach here. Uh, I would like to. Uh, I would like us all to look at a, at a different thing now. Let's talk about kids and teenagers. And we have Galina Soldatova here, and professor of Moscow State University, and she's a well-known, well-known expert in the area of cyber socialization of kids and teenagers. What do you think is the difference between the ethical standards adhered to by the present-day present teenagers and previous generations? Do you think? that total immersion in internet is uh, associated with certain risks. This is a very important topic. It's a very important one and pragmatic researchers and experts only start focusing on it now. Like biotechnologies, artificial intelligence, predictability of behavior, confidentiality of personal data. All these things are aspects of our discussion about digital ethics. But these moral standards, they, they are present in our life, in our rules routine life, but this topic has been hardly looked at over the last 50 years of our academic, uh, of our academic activities and academic life. Сравнивая результаты исследований разных лет и так далее, и исследуем их по. We are looking at these things now, and we are trying to. Our research is focused on a number of criteria, like digital socialization, cognitive abilities. There are certain features with, like hyper-connectivity, which are associated with the present generation. Uh, our teenagers and our young people spend bigger part of their time 
being connected to the internet. So hyperconnectivity, augmented personality, and augmented personality meaning that people are becoming connected to gadgets and digital platforms. So it builds up the cognitive system of a kid growing up. It uh, makes it changing. And today our kids are actually focused on the way uh, how they uh, focus on this uh, built up uh, personality never existing in the history of the humanity. And they do it absolutely independently. And that is a serious story. Also, they live in the mixed reality and they realize it and they understand it. And if uh, we would talk about the ethics, the ethics we can uh, see it as a part of the digital sociality, closely related to emotional aspects, emotions, the understanding of the justice. And I would like to see the way I see it. I see the three main aspects of the ethical system uh, where our children are growing up uh, within, especially about the online environment. Uh, the first thing we talked about the European, the Western uh, values, the commandments, and at the first stage uh, where the internet was uh, evolving uh, like the ten she's very close to the Biblian commandments. Well, maybe another scene when you spend time on online. Yeah, uh, this is what uh, uh, we were trying to propagate. Uh, and of course, uh, aspect number two is that you have uh, new aspects online from Aristotle. You have the point that uh, ethics is a part of philosophy. What can we do and how to do it? And actually, the users really invent the rules, and our kids are not just users, but also creators, like prosumers, you know the word, those that create and consume. So they shape all type of the rules and standards, and I could give you a number of standards. Okay, could you please give us a number of cases? For example, they shape the rules of uh, communication from online communication to uh, communication with smartphone. You cannot um, give a call to people you don't know, to strangers. Otherwise, you need to send a voice message or otherwise. In this area, you have a lot of uh, moral and ethical dilemmas. We just imagine, but they have to resolve the cases. Like, I could give you a case. For instance, if we would take Instagram filters and the Photoshop tools where you have images, with edited appearance, and there is one line and you have an opposite line where on all those edited photos in Photoshop you need to add a remark that it has been edited because it's not right and not correct, not ethical because it can uh, develop a dysmorphophobia in other people where people do not accept themselves in the new image. This is an ethical dilemma being resolved online right now. And thirdly, as for the ethics, I would like to mention 
uh, when you have the environment administrated by the channels, platforms, social media, websites. They have a very rigid and stringent policy of what is not allowed or how you observe the confidentiality and social support. This is one side of this administrating and the other one about the ethics is that the backside, what is it, all the algorithms, they are not invented by child psychologists, but they are focused on controlling and predicting the behavior of a human, on changing the behavior and the mentality. And what was done in terms of controlling and convincing, you never had the super tools before, and they are very efficient. And the three aspects I mentioned, I believe it's something very comprehensive. It's not ambivalence as a system. The ethics of the real life and the ethics of the digital life. But it's polyvalent. Thank you, thank you. It's important. And in my opinion, it's uh, really relevant to develop uh, the general ethical principles. I'm sorry. As a practitioner for me, it's a way, a method to wonder on, and I realized that our discussion is like something from Ray Bradbury, the Martian Chronicles. I read it being a teenager, and uh, the Martian uh, residents were there, and it is a déjà vu for me. And about 15 years ago, I had a discussion about digital marketing. So, a digital marketing was something very, very different. Another planet. But now, there is an alley. No difference between digital marketing and normal marketing. What we are discussing online is part of our life. It's not possible to separate it ethical rules for online. No, we never come back from the internet, from being online. But it's a new world. Maybe it's not a different world, but it came to our life. I don't think we should uh, discuss digitalization separately. Our world is much richer, but we still have the panel code, the ethics, the work, the way they used to. Okay, what you called a discussion? Allow me to interfere. What we said about the new teaching rules, the ethics, if we would talk about the girls, the way it was discussed in your remark, or maybe you asked the question, the goal for formalizing the new ethics and teaching the AI in the context of the new ethical rules. This is a principal role and goal because we don't just take decisions in the terms of business or military goals. We delegate the decisions to AI. It's not the way how we move to the world of hybrid world. It's a competing world, a new reality, represented by the new actors. And there is an active uh, polemics on what are the limits of this delegation of decisions dramatically in terms of if you should speed up or slow down on the road, if you should uh, shoot out 
the terrorists. Okay, there is an ethics, a human ethics which became richer. It's an updated reality, and you have a, an ethics related to AI, and you have a lot of uh, questions. It's not about teenagers or kids, not about the older generation, uh, not the medium-aged people, but the elder people, senior people. It's a separate discussion. We only have 15 minutes left, and we will not uh, manage it now. Okay, let's ask Alisa. Alisa, do you think you need a separate ethical code for the digital world? Now, she will find an article from our colleague. No, I would like to mention another joke. I would like Siri to ask uh, Yandex Plus and another joke. And uh, she said, you are wrong. And uh, this is an ethic when you choose between different ethical conceptions, which are relevant to our life. You mentioned uh, the you have uh, different ethics in younger people, in people who have uh, modern gadgets and don't communicate really offline. It's not that simple. No, it's not that bad. It's not that simple. For the new year, I got 200 uh, ratings from uh, 5,000 of my friends, but only one person called me. It was my mother, and she can give me a tip, a bit of advice of who I should talk to, the partners. And I don't listen to my mother for many time. I just love her. And I talk to her once in a year. And if she would lecture me uh, about my ethical behavior, uh, it would drive me mad. Yeah. You have social structures, the family, the university. And such structures keep changing with the digital ethics. We have a great Sparrow. Uh, Rupert Sparrow, a great researcher from Australia, and he said that when operators of uh, military drones appeared, the ethical side changed. They need just to recognize the faces of terrorists and take the decision on whether to press the button or not and develop new the technologies uh, on whether you kill or uh, you don't. That's the goal for the modern technologies, and that's the goal for our ethical progress. And the last thing I would like to share with you, just to move on uh, how you overcome the violence. You cannot trust in humanity anymore. So the new world, Igor, uh, the new world will ever deny the laws of the past world. No. There is a joke. You shan't kill in the older Christian and uh, Judaic tradition. You shan't not kill, but everyone would kill anyone just justifying the murder. But you need to overcome, as Kirill Martinov, my colleague, said, you need to delegate uh, them the rule of um, annihilating the infrastructure. But it's not possible for a human, when a human sees an opponent being sadic, he starts uh, 
thinking about killing the person. Um, I would like to support all these statements and focusing on the new generation. We have a new empirical basis. We try to see, compare and analyze and you know, Худо-бедно все равно приходится понимать, что те нормы, которые были раньше, они возвращаются к нормам, сейчас на подрастающее поколение стараемся смотреть через and we are trying to look at the new generation through the optics of the new normality. We realize that the today's situation shifted uh, the limits, as Lev said. You told about the cognitive development, a lot of problems, but it's a different topic. I would not like to cover now. And you see, everything is changing. We look at teenagers, kids, children. We see how they keep changing, being influenced by the technologies. And we see that the norms of development standards shaped in the last century, our teachers use as a flag they don't bear the check if you remember the Kohlberg development changes. You talk about the new ethics and we have a lot of connotation. We talk about the new digital ethics and I believe we need to look at it uh, uh, through the goals of the new reality. And as for the violence and all the serious things you mentioned here, what children are worried about in the Internet, about risks and threats online, well, about hate contents, abuse, cyberbullying, cyberaggression, uh, hating, shaming, uh, cyber-stalking, and I can give you a list. And they are ready to fight with it. Every third kid is uh, involved in moderating the negative content online. I would like to add, I remember my elder daughter graduating from the gymnasium. There were a number of statements. Young people are lost people. And then there were authors from ancient years, the Roman Empire, all generations believed that everything is going down and it's a result of the progress in the society and in my opinion it's controllable and the younger generation many people look at like the saint augustine cruel beliefs looking at the book but the yeah. what are very environmentally friendly Friendly, the new generation. It shouldn't be dramatic about them. They are nice. There is a break in every generation, the way we feel. And maybe it's uh, going faster. However, you have an ethics related to AI. This is a separate uh, discussion, and nothing is understood about this. Okay, we're running out of time and I would like to thank you for this wonderful discussion and I hope that we can continue it maybe next year here on this forum we have a lot of open questions compared to answers but as for me I'm convinced that no matter what the digital world brings to us we should build up new uh, moral and ethical constructions as humans for some time, for some time, okay, yeah, as for now, 
a I is secondary at the moment, and you, you shouldn't be threatened. The human should believe that going and pursuing the technological progress, at the moment, at least, you couldn't digitalize uh, your identity, your personality. And at the end of the day, I would like to read out my colleagues from Austria. Uh, Viktor Frankl institutes the well-known psychologist from Austria, uh, Alexander Bocciani and Elizabeth Lucas. Uh, Elizabeth Lucas was uh, the best-loved uh, pupil of Viktor Frankl. It all depends on whether the relation to the progress will be in line with the progress. Uh, the dissolution of an atom never meant that physicians uh, would invent an A-bomb, that uh, photographies could be posted online never means propagation of child pornography. If you release the lead, uh, it would be, um, we would all be helpless, but let God help us with that. Thank you. I think we can resume our discussion with that.